um, Bonnie Lipscomb. Let's bring Bonnie forward. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Wallace. How are you? I'm good. Bonnie is the director of um, economic development at the city of Santa Cruz, and uh, she has been the leader of a team there that really was um, a central figure in uh, the economy of Santa Cruz weathering this storm. Um, Bonnie, I want to ask you first off if you'll maybe set the scene for us about um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the, de the degree to which it kind of took everyone by surprise in the business community. Um, do you remember that time um, specifically and, and, and the kind of um, sense of surprise and the sense of suddenness that was, that was happening early on? Yeah, I mean, starting back as early, I mean, we were all up, you know, following the news in February sort of about the pandemic, but it wasn't until March that suddenly it became our reality of what that impact was. And we all immediately were in, you know, you mentioned um, with Bella sort of, we were in reactive mode. We have spent, you know, the last, you know, almost 10 months now um, reacting and we've been going through various phases, but immediately it was about, you know, connecting with everyone um, across the counties, sort of regionally, obviously with our, you know, the, uh, Dr. Newell and um, in, at the county, but also across with the business connections across the county from the chambers, you know, to the community foundation, to the business council and the other jurisdictions to just make sure we're sharing information immediately because we're, we're all trying to, to understand this new information that's coming down and what the impacts are. And we're all trying to interpret this information in real time and not confuse our business community. Everyone is sort of wanting to know what does this mean? Um, so we had a lot of early coordination and really that's continued, you know, throughout, you know, since, since March, it's really been critical to be able to be as responsive as possible to our business community during this time. But, you know, with, you know, as is obvious, it's been completely, you know, an upheaval. Um, everything as we know it for businesses has, has been pretty much turned on its head um, over the last, you know, 10 I'm trying months. to imagine what the phone calls were like that first day or two to your office. I mean, because small businesses, uh, they're not going to call Jimmy Panetta or something. They're going to call you. They're going to say, hey, what's going on here? And you had to have information. Um, what were people wanting out of you early on? You know, they were just wanting to, mostly it was interpreting what the governor's order was. Like, what does this mean? As you're reading it, they're like, wait, we have to close our business? Like, just that in itself was, I think, unfathomable when it first came out of really trying to understand, like, how do we work around this? Like, are we an essential, essential business? Are we not? What does that mean? What's the definition for essential? I mean, those were some of the very, very early conversations. And then really just making sure we're communicating with our council, we're communicating with the community and making sure that the information that we have in real time is accurate. That was just a constant check-in across the board, you know, with the county. Um, and really, I'd say it, it what this year has been about, I think for us at the local government level is just how important our, our communication is and our partnerships and collaboration across the county. I mean, it's been the key for all of us. None of us are doing this, you know, completely on our own. We're all working together. I guess the only analogy we have is the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. And there probably isn't many people on the city staff that were there. That was 30 plus years ago now. Yeah. Um, but you were able to draw from those lessons a little bit. Yeah, you know, surprisingly, there are a few from uh, right after the earthquake that are around. And we fortunately had a couple in our department who have since retired, but were pivotal, you know, in the last 15 years of sharing those lessons with us. And uh, they were quick to call us to say, this is just like the earthquake. And this is what we did. So uh, you know, obviously the, what you do is different under a pandemic than what you did on a, on, you know, after an earthquake. And this was, you know, the whole, the whole region and the impacts are different, but that sense of community, I think is very, very similar. It was almost a sense of business as usual had to be kind of suspended, right? We have to kind of create new rules, new protocols. It was almost like, um, building the plane as you were flying it kind of, right? It was. It was. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, of... from trying to develop the, um, you know, what's the six six foot distancing and us having the same signage that businesses could post them on their door so that they could communicate it's actually safe to shop here. You know, I think our uh, temporary outdoor expansion program, largely used by restaurants, but other businesses have as well, being able to adapt to that sort of ever changing environment was really important for businesses. Uh, you know, it was just, it was, it, particularly the first few months, it was all about survival. Sure, that, um, that happened later in the summer when all the restaurants kind of came out. And um, I guess the, the, the permitting process had to be adapted and changed also. Um, and because time was of the essence, uh, did you have to um, sort of put aside the playbook for permitting as well? We did, but, you know, because everyone, you know, everyone was on deck, we had, you know, just in real time conversations between, you know, our planning, building, fire department, you know, public works, parks and rec, we were all discussing together what it would take to turn around those permits. And so we completely changed how we did, how we did permitting. In some cases, we were able to issue permits within the same day. Um, for businesses to expand outside. At the same time, we were ordering K rails, you know, because people were expanding into parking spaces on the street. And so we're trying to make those safe, you know, for the public to come downtown. So it actually feels comfortable in that space. But really, it was everyone recognizing that we have to uh, react and come up with a different way of doing things because businesses need our help today, not a month down the road. You know, Bonnie, it's kind of strange to talk about this as if it's something that happened a long time ago. We're very much still in the middle of it. We, um, it, was, it was announced today, as a matter of fact, that the governor has, uh, in the Bay Area region, in which Santa Cruz is included, the stay-at-home order is going to go into effect, I believe it's midnight tomorrow. Um, That's right. I have that right? Um, so here we go again, kind of. I mean, it must feel yeah. like a groundhog day to you at the city, but at least you have... I guess the experience of March and April before you go into this, what's the thinking like right now with the businesses and the city in your ability to help them? Well, I mean, the timing is not ideal. So many businesses were really counting on this holiday season to make up for all the early incredible losses that their businesses face. So that's not good. Um, I think what is different this time around is because of the creativity in our community and those partnerships and, coll and collaborations like Ride Out the Wave and we now have shopsantacruzcounty.org and we have a whole shop local campaign and we've really seen the difference. I mean, just in our downtown dollars alone, it's like 10 times the number of downtown dollars sold this season so far than we had last year. So the community is really coming out and supporting and finding creative ways to shop online, support our businesses. You know, outdoor dining has been really successful. Obviously that's going to be impacted this time around, at least for the next three weeks. It's a three week minimum time that we're gonna be in the regional stay home order. We'll continue to assess as long as our, our intensive care unit beds are lower than 15%. But hopefully we'll be, you know, we'll find some capacity, you know, within the month and the restaurants will be able to open back up for outdoor dining. So I think this time around, it's still the timing's not great with the holiday season, but I think the community is really coming out to support the businesses. And, and that's going to continue well into 2021, um, that community need to support local. Another thing that happened today, um, big news is the first people in Santa Cruz County received the COVID vaccine. So there is, that's another difference, I think, is that we see something on the horizon that may be yeah. a game changer, really. And um, I don't want to get too out over my skis here, but I have seen a couple of people write about how there could be a boom coming in 2021 from all this kind of pent-up economic energy if we can get through to next summer and have this vaccine kind of make a difference. Um, how do you feel about the year coming, uh, 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 coming up and the business community's ability to bounce back? Um, are you optimistic about that? You know, I, I think, yes. <laughs> I, that's, it's definitely a layered, a layered answer. And, um, I, what I am encouraged by is just seeing that the support and seeing the creativity of our business owners, of their desire to work through this, seeing 
the um, generosity of some of our property owners in reducing or waiving rent and just that recognition that we all are working together. So when I look forward, one of the things you see now, there actually are new businesses in Santa Cruz opening during this time. In the downtown alone, we have nine new businesses and two more on the way. I just uh, answered questions today. Um, and our, our team in economic development is working with folks about a new brewery that's coming. So, I mean, it's just, there is still hope. There are still entrepreneurs out there that see Santa Cruz, see our broader community as a great place to do business. So I am optimistic for 2021. I do think there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. There's a lot we need to do. Um, I think we need to continue to provide support by changing the way we do business, the way we support businesses um, around our community. And I, and I think we're collaborating across, that's one of the big changes too, is not just with jurisdictional boundaries, we are collaborating across the county to work together to try to provide business support. And that's a change that has been so positive. Um, we've always worked together before, but not this closely. And I think that's making all the difference and we'll continue to do that in the year ahead. What's fascinating about that is that the new world that emerges might look very different than the old world. And you and I have talked about this in the past about how the work world, um, because mm -hmm. of Zoom and remote work and all that, might might be a different animal altogether, and that might impact office space downtown. I mean, yeah. the downtown might look differently in a few years. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it was on its way to looking differently. I mean, the way you know retail changes and it, retail has been changing and it's it's i think it is being impacted quite a bit we see in the last year um, with the impact of online shopping a lot more uh experiential retail um people coming to have that you know really firsthand brick and mortar experience where you go into the store and you have more personalized shopping and you have other experiences when you're in that retail that you just can't get online. So that was already happening, but I think this really, the pandemic really escalated the need for that change of creating something different when you go shopping. And I think as far as office, um, you know, Santa Cruz, I will say Santa Cruz is always going to be a really desirable place to live and therefore also work. And I think the pandemic has enabled a lot of people that work over the hill to look at Santa Cruz in a new way. So I do think there'll continue to be a desire and a need for some level of office space. It may be differently configured and maybe not as much space per, per business or company that we saw before, but I still think there's gonna be a need. We're such social creatures, but we are changing. And I think one of the things we need to do at the city for businesses and for office space and for residential, which is dramatically changing in the downtown, we're gonna have a lot more residential units in the next few years, but we need to look at how we zone our spaces, particularly in the downtown and some of our primary office and shopping and residential where you have these mix of uses. So we have more flexibility in how things are zoned, both for height and depth. So those are some of the changes that I see are going to be a necessity in the next year and, and, and going forward. Well, strap in, it's gonna be a rough ride, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Bonnie Lipscomb, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Wallace. Really appreciate it. Thank you to Bonnie Lipscomb. That was great. That was, that was a terrific conversation.